very small computer in here. So today we will cover the uh, the growth of the Ukrainian vault and the the Ukrainian basically the Ukrainian base and the Ukrainian vault. And uh, you uh, you already had the what the mid phase the mid century uh, growth and development. Mm -hmm. You had it the mandible. You had it and uh, what else the TMJ. Okay. So today it's kind of putting everything together. Uh, we will go over the cranial base and then the cranial hole, and then we'll see how they change and how they grow in terms of like this uh, structure uh, as a whole structure. So uh, the cranial fish. Okay. So when will you be uh, posting these? Because they're, they're not here. They're not. Uh, will you post them later? He said he posts after because. Oh, okay, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so uh, the cranial fissure skeleton can be divided into cranial base or the cranium and the fissure skeleton. The cranium itself is subdivided to the uh, vault and the cranial base and it has eight bones. Some of them single, some of them are paired bones. So uh, I'm not going to ask you to name them, but you should, you should know it by now, right? The, the facial skeleton can be studied under the nasal maxillary and the mandible and also the TMJ if we think about it as either as a part of the mandible or as a separate structure. And that's about four, that's a 14 from the book. So how much the total, the cranial facial skeleton? 22. Here's the, uh, the one that we're gonna study today, the cranial bulb and also the one in the pink uh, the cranial or the skull base, you already did the mid phase and the, the mandible. So we, we kind of started backwards. We started from the mandible, the maxilla, and then we're going up. So what's the cranial base? Uh, I'm sure you are familiar with this uh, view. It's from the top, and you, as you see, the, when you see the cranial base from the top, you see major uh, three cranial fossa, the interior, the middle, and the the posterior one, and if you see, if you remember from the anatomy, it goes like which one is higher, I mean the posterior or the anterior one, in terms of like higher level than the other, compared to each other. So the anterior goes first, and then you go down to the middle, and then it goes to the posterior one. The function of the cranial base, it plugs all the loops of this uh, cerebrum, so the the brain itself in there, and provides a passageway for all the cranial nerves ex exiting and also the blood vessels going to the brain. It also articulates the skull with the vertebral column and also the mandible and maxillary region. It acts like a hub <coughs> in a way that everything attached to the cranial base, speci uh, specifically the face, as you see here, it acts like a face template, a facial template that the face grow underneath the cranial base and it, will, it, it play a major role in that kind of uh, growth uh, process of the face, as you already noticed with the, the nasomic center complex, what we, call, what we call the type of displacement that goes after the growth of the cranial base. Is it primary or secondary? So if the cranial base grow and push the maxilla down, is it primary or secondary? It's secondary. So, uh, and there's one more thing that you see, I'm sure you, you know about it. It's like, it's obvious the, the cranial base itself, it's not flat, smooth, neat uh, structure. It has this uh, foramina and, and uh, curvature inside. And because of the, the type of the function that the cranial base has to do, all function here, if you compare it with the cranial vault, you would see the cranial vault is very uh, kind of uh, smooth surface comparing to the cranial base. And we'll know why is that uh, in, a, in a minute. So uh, again, back to the, the diagram in here. You see, think about the cranial base. It's, it's connecting to the, to the mandible, right? Who agree? Hands up. Does the cranial, the cranial base touch the, the mandible? I mean, if we think about the, the mandible as a whole structure with a TMJ, we would say, yes, it does. So it's the only structure that goes in touch with the cranial vault, with the nasal maxillary complex, and also with the mandible. The cranial base, you see here the pink color in there, 
if you think about the face, which is the nasobaxillary complex in here, the majority of the face in here, it all attaching the, the cranial base. It doesn't attach like to the, the cranial vault uh, per se in terms of like how they, they, they grow. There is a, the frontal bone in there, but it's like the majority of the face comes from the, the attachment with the cranial base here. We'll start with this structure and then we'll go up to the cranial bone. Back to the growth mechanism we already discussed in the concepts lecture. So we have here uh, elongation of synchondrosis, cortical drift and remodeling, and <coughs> suture growth. These three types of the growth, they all uh, happen maybe in some time, in same time, in different time, in the cranial base. And uh, if we remember from the uh, the lecture we had before, the synchondrosis. Does anyone know uh, what's the synchondrosis, like the definition of synchondrosis? Or to make it easier to question, is it? Two bones behind. OK, is it fibrous tissue? Is it <coughs> cartilage? Or is it bone? Bone. Is it? So it's cartilage. So the growth in the cranial base, as you see, and this is only the cranial base, it has type of cartilage growth, which is back to the three theories. It goes with the Scott theory about the cartilage as the, the growth center. And also the, the, cartilage, uh, the cartilage drift and remodeling, it's part of the, the intermembranous uh, change that happened because the cranial base has some, some uh, structure of that. And also the suture growth where the growth actually a new bone added up on the edges of the sutures. So the cranial base, uh, it's endochondral ossification, the type of ossification of the cranial base. We have intramembrous and endochondral. The majority <coughs> of the cranial base is endochondral and the synchondroses are defined as, as the bands of primary cartilage present between bones. You see here the, the synchondroses. If you think about this, I mean, it's two bones. And, uh, this is the sphenoid, there is this ethmoid bone, and here the synchondrosis in between. And there is a unique uh, structure for the synchondrosis that make it different from any other structure in the body, which is it has two sided epiphyseal uh, plates if you compare it to lung bones, which has only one. They have a band of immature profilation uh, cartilage in the center, this one here. And on each side, there's a cartilage that grow and then transfer to, boo, uh, to be a part of the cranial base or a bone ossification happening in there. So the, the unique things about the, the synchondrosis is that the growth happened from both sides of this middle uh, immature cartilage in here, which help to elongating the cranial base and also, that's part of, of uh, uh, kind of special characteristics of the, of the cartilage that it does grow under pressure. Not the suture, not anything, I mean, all kinds of joints, only the cartilage that grow and they is basically elongated in terms of like interposterior direction. So elongation of the synchondrosis in combination with drift and remodeling. So the three mechanisms, the three types of growth we have, drifting, remodeling, and also the suture growth, it, it happens at the same time. It's like it, the, the elongation happening down there. With the elongation, the cranial base get expand. And also, at that time, there is remodeling going on, and also new bone added to the, the suture between the uh, the two bones in the in the cranial base. So when we think about the, the mechanism or the type of study, we study it as like separate things, like three different mechanisms, but they all go at the same time. They all uh, happen at the same time, different places. There's another view of the synchondrosis. So if you think about this as here is the brain, and it's like someone looking that direction. So you see there is the sphenoethmoidal here and uh, intrasphenoid and this is the most important one, the sphenoxybital synchondrosis because it's the, the, 
that's the last one that fused, and uh, it does make the, the cranial veins, especially the the, uh, the posterior and the middle cranial veins, elongated between the S point here and, or at least what we call in orthodontics, this uh, like the the name when you trace it, it's S point to B point or basion to a point to treat land. It's all by the elongation happening because of sphenocervical synchondrosis, get expand, and uh, you need to know also the time of fusion or the growth cessation of the uh, synchondrosis. So you see here, uh, intrasphenoid synchondrosis fuse at, at birth. The interoccipital synchondrosis about three to five years uh, of age. And the sphenoethmoidal synchondrosis it goes up to seven to eight years. And finally, the sphenoxyvital uh, synchondrosis, it's active until 12 and 15. And uh, there's some confusion here in terms of like, if it's, act, like if it's not active anymore, it's not growing anymore, sometime, some textbook they refer to it as like, it's done, but in, does it uh, ossify? Because we know after the growth stop, there's ossification going on. It doesn't happen like right away, it takes some time for the ossification to happen. So if you have a question, sometimes you'll have a question about when the ossification uh, happened for the synchondrosis or when does the growth stop, even though you can use this number, but the ossification usually happens after the, uh, the uh, active growth stop. Sometimes it takes, like, like for example here, you might find some, some individual who is like 12, I mean 20 or 20 something the, the synchondrosis is fused, but it's not fully ossified. But it's like, this is too much information, but just, just in case if you had this kind of, uh, when you read it, sometimes they refer it to ossification, sometimes to growth cessation, and sometimes that it just they say it's not active. So back to the cranial base, as we said, it has three foci and the interior, middle, and posterior. Regardless which part of it, the it, the, uh, cranial, the cranial foci enlarged by endocron uh, endocron uh, endocranial resorption and ectocranial deposition as well by the growth of the cranial floor structure. What does that mean? So, it doesn't, you don't, I mean, whenever you, hear, I mean, whenever you think about the ectocranial and, and endocranial, this is the endo and this is the ecto, you should uh, understand that cranial base is way different than the cranial vault. So, Whenever we think about the cranial base, everything inside is resorption, which means give big room for the soft tissue, for the brain to occupy that space. And from outside, there is a position or, or deposition of the bone. How about the floor? What do you think? Are we building bone up there on the floor of the cranial base, or are we like taking bone away and going down and make it, make it deeper. Who says resorption? Okay, so right, with the, with the cranial base, it's always, uh, sorry, it's always resorption and the, so the, the question is the, the foramen magnum, does it, it always goes down with age, with the growth at a, the area and get bigger as well. So it get bigger and it moves down. That because of resorption on the cranial floor. This, again, this is from the top and this summarizes what type of growth and type of resorption happening and it, it gives you all the, the mechanism and the, that we talked about. So this is the synchondrosis. <coughs> between the posterior and the middle. So the type of growth in here is cartilaginous growth or it's like uh, uh, the type of bone in here, it's endochondral uh, ossification happening here. So this is one way of the growth and if you see the synchondrosis in the midline, it doesn't go here or there, it's just the midline of the cranial base. So we know the growth here is because of the synchondrosis uh, get expand and cartilage transfer to bone, so we have this kind of growth. However, the rest of the, like, 
central or, or the area around the center here, if you see the minus everywhere in here, that's uh, resorption and here's the remodeling happening and drifting. It's not synchrodrosis. And you see again the third one is the sutural growth. If you think about this as a sutures, so this is where the new bone added up and get the cranial uh, base expanded as well. Again, as I said, the, the, the foramen magnum moves down and gets bigger because of the resorption around it and, and uh, in like the, the way of how, how, how it like, try to, to control or to keep the nerve in the same places, that type of uh, adaption with the growth so the nerve, nerve uh, foramina stay at the same place, same, same position with the brain growing around it. If you see here, there's some, something different in here, in the, in the front, the, between the interior and the, the middle one, that the, the bone disposition of the orbital side of sphenoid will lead to anterior displacement of the anterior cranial fossa. So here is the different, and it's a little bit uh, tricky in here, but if you think about it, it's like the frontal lobe and the, the it moves like it gets bigger, so the forehead kind of moving forward because of that deposition of, of, uh, of new bone on the orbital side of sphenoid. So that movement, number three here, pushing up forward, if you see here, this is because of the deposition from the orbital side of sphenoid bone and had help also in, in AP expansion of the cranial, cranial base. This also explain it, so it goes down and push it forward. And also here, the cranial floor with the, with the resorption on the floor of the cranium, it moves down. And this type of movement, oh, as, we, as we explained before, it pushed the maxilla and the nasal maxilla complex, causing what we already discussed, uh, the secondary displacement. Any questions so far? So this is all from the brain growing? What's that? This is all from the brain growing? Yeah, right. I mean, back to soft tissue theory, mo like moss matrix theory. It's like it goes. I mean, if you think about the synchrodrosis, nah, it's not like the brain per se. But it's like the majority. They like at least the concept they understand to now is that the brain grow and uh, the the everything follow. Okay. However, it doesn't push it, and there's a big big discussion in here. Does the brain push the, the, the bone to get expansion, or is it just the, the pressure increase and that initiates signaling of, of genetic messengers to, to, to start the process of the, uh, of the resorption and, and, and remodeling? Also change in the inner and outer surface of this plate like uh, the bone itself get, get remodeled. So basically the suture growth there is no synchondrosis, so there's no synchondrosis uh, growth or orientation in the cranial bulk. There's only sutures, which open up and there's new bone added up between the suture. And also there is regular remodeling that happen in terms of like resorption and deposition from one side to the other side. A position of new bone at this suture is a major mechanism of growth of the cranial bulk with remodeling of surfaces contouring take place at the same time. So as brain get expands, bones of the calibra and uh, are displaced correspondingly and it's like kind of picture trying to explain in here. Expansion of the brain, that type of expansion increase the pressure which also start the mechanism of the adaption by having building new bone and, and expansion of the suture. This displacement causes the tension in the suture membrane and new bone formation will occur on the suture basis. <coughs> so again to summarize it, the, the growth at the cranial suture, the brain growth start and then the increase of intracranial pressure which, uh, which caused the displacement of the cranial bones this displacement lead to suture separation, which is on the edge there's tension happening there. 
that tension would lead to the bone remodeling by a position and the position to get, uh, again, think about suture, about two bone mating to each other. So whenever they push apart, they're trying to go back together by building bone on both ends. So if you think about the, the edge of the sutures, it's always adding, it's, it's always positive. It's always a position and the position, not resorption. You get it? Same all time? Bones trying to, be, to be, uh, trying to be together like all time. So when you push it again, I mean, in the suture area, try to spread <coughs> them. Each one try to build on the edge like new bone to get reached to the other one. So suture and joints and, and synchondrosis, they always do this kind of building bone on the edge to go back touching each other. So the, the, the suture is always like getting smaller then? Not so much. <coughs> Just think about suture like this. So when you push it apart, each one on the edge would have to be bone deposition to, to close that space. Does it make sense? Kind of. But it eventually gets smaller, right? Smaller? Yeah, the suture and when it like fuses. Okay, I'll, I'll show you the, the diagram here, so maybe you can explain it. Yeah. Let's. So before I go to that, because the, the next picture will explain the suture growth. So now we already have the suture growth, and now what's, what type of remodeling happening in the cranial vault? And before I explain it, I thought it's going to be easier to refresh you about the, uh, the unique feature of the cranial vault and the, that would help in understanding the, the mechanical of the vault. So this piece of the, the cranial vault in here, this part outside is ectocranial and the one inside endocranial. Each one of them covered by preosteum, where is the new bone grow, and in between there is a spongy bone. Okay, so the spongy bone spread outer or ectocranial bony plates from the inner one, the thickness the thickening or thickness growth of the cranial vault is a result of preosteal activity at the endo, ecto and endocranial bones. So in the, this picture here, the outside is a position or deposition. And the inside is what? It's the position again. That's, yeah, that's different between the cranial vault and the cranial base. But how, how that type of mechanism helps in the growth and also it doesn't, if this keep growing outside, outward, and this growing inside, inward, it doesn't make sense that this would give us enough room for the, the brain, right? This is the difference here because on the industrial of the, this, they call it the outer table and inner table, are you familiar with that term? For the, only for the cranial ball. So, the inside or the inner table has resorption and also here has resorption. Bone will be added on, on the outside, lamellar bone or, or compact bone. And same thing inside from inside. At the same time, there is a negative here, which, bone, which is bone resorption, eating up the new bone added and keep, keep taking away that new bone we add or the skull adds. So the end result, you will have thicker bone with what? Spon is it more spongy bone or more convex bone? So whenever, I mean, at the end of the growth here, we have convex here, and we have spongy here, and we have convex here, right? Anyone thinks that the convex bone will be thicker, raise his hand. Uh, how about the, the other half, the spongy bone would be thicker? What is resorbing now in the middle? The middle, like... Is the new compact bone that's being laid down? Is right. It's being resorbed? Right. Okay. It's it being laid down from the out yeah. here and here and being resorbed from inside. Yeah. So that layer hypothetically is staying the same. No. What is what is resorbing in the middle? So you add a bone. I try to to put like think about this here. So think about adding bone first, not both of them at the same time. Think about you added bone. 
So this will be thicker, right? Yeah. And this will be thicker. Like yeah. the bottom. Okay, and then think about resorbing that bone but from inside. Yeah. So you will end up with the same size compact bone, but bigger size spongy bone in the middle. Wider. Right. Is it clear? So end result is the same amount of compact bone and more, more spongy. Almost, yeah. I mean, it, it gets a little bit thicker, but it's like you, the end result, thicker bone, so just relative majority is spongy bone. Does the resorption and what's that position happen same way? Same way or same rate? Same rate. That's a good question. I don't think so because eventually it would, it would do nothing. Or at least if it's it having the same rate, then we will uh, we'll end up with the same thickness of compact bone and wider. So when the compact bone gets thicker, then the absorption must be happening at a faster rate than the position. I mean, it's like we shouldn't think about anything in biology this way. It having different like different time, different mechanism. And it doesn't go like if you touch your head and see it from on from outside. It's not like smooth and neat and it's like so that feeling or that that's mean the process is like kind of behind on some area and and more in other area. Right. But the end result is is getting with age we get thicker cranial vault, and that cranial vault has more spongy bone than convex bone. Okay. This could explain it much better. So a brain expands bone of the clavera are displaced outward. New bone formation occur on the flat surface of the cranial bolt. So it's the cranial and endocranial, both sides. Industrial surface undergoes resorption. The thickness of the cortex increase with in this process with increase in metallurgy spaces as well. Okay. I like this picture here, trying to put everything together. So back to your question about the suture. These are the think about anything positive is so let's start from the last part we said about the vault. So I mean, bone deposition on the outside and inside as well. So we get only this, get thicker a little bit, the cranial vault. The gray one is bone resorption. So the cranial base, the majority of the cranial base is bone resorption. So the, it start here and then keep moving down. The, uh, the suture growth, either, because the suture, it goes from the cranial base to the cranial vault. And, and both of them has suture growth. It doesn't matter where, the, where that suture are. This, the mechanic of growth is the same. They push apart both sides by adding new bone in between. So those who, there was a question about the suture. Are they getting thinner or thicker here? Wider. Back to this diagram. It would be getting wider, right? Because the only way it would, the volume would increase if the bone is getting right. wider. Yeah. So the suture, per se, I mean the, if we think about the suture keep growing, it would get bigger by adding bone on both sides, and then the skull would expand. Same thing here in the back. And also, that mechanism, that expansion which happened in, in the soft tissue help or initiate the process of the synchondrosis growth here on the cranial veins. So we have remodeling, minus and plus here, suture growth, and also synchrodrosis get expanded in AP or anterior posterior direction. It always starts from the, the soft tissue growth that moves everything around. Where is the division where the endocranial is either deposition or resorption? Because the cranial base is resorption. Right. So the question was the reason. Like where is the what, where is the, the, the line? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, the where would we say? Okay, from here we're gonna mm -hmm. have this kind of. I would I would think about it as if uh, like if you th if you if there is anything holding like bearing weight, that's resorption. If not, then it would just go the same. Uh, we can buy a position on both sides. And the suture wouldn't necessarily get 
adds bones. It, it adds bones. Okay, if we, this way we think would, they would stay the same. Right. Okay. But it's like the, to make it to make it. I mean, uh, easy to understand it. This suture should go away, and this suture should go away here. So something should happen in, in between. So in between, that's the bone, but the suture itself would just kind of remain smaller. Right. And right. So if we think about suture like as something, but it never gets smaller unless you think about it. Okay, they're gonna fuse, and they're gonna be part of the. Because some sutures stay until age of sixty or seventies. So if you think about suture as, okay, that small groove in between, with age, it would get smaller. It's a little bit confusing, but it's like suture itself has to open to have new bone in between to get bigger, bigger structure. Go ahead. So you might have already said this, but is, is it the growth, like, just in the cranium from the sutures that's, that's displacing the maxilla? Is that, is that what's causing the displacement of the maxilla? Or is that just the second? No, the, actually the suture doesn't displace the maxilla. It's like, think about the cranial base growth itself, either by suture growth, or by remodeling, or by uh, synchondrosis. The, the, the process of the growth in the cranial base is going to push it down, which would push the maxilla or the nasal maxilla even further down and forward. And what, this is what we refer as secondary displacement. So not the suture itself, it's everything. The suture, remodeling, and the second dose. Okay. Questions? Can you explain the, the air holes again for the sutures? For the sutures? Yeah. Because I would think the air holes should be opposite, because if it's causing tension, then the, air, the suture's air holes should be going towards the midline, this, and the bone will grow that way. Now, in this, this arrow is trying to say that, let's say here, the distance from this point to this point would get bigger oh, that's awesome. because of suture are opening and having new bone in between. Okay. This, I put everything because that figure was an article, so I put it underneath here if you want to read it. It says the same what we said here, but it's like in a way that might help you if you read it on your own. Okay, so we already covered the, uh, the cranial base, the cranial vault. Uh, there's one more thing, kind of link it to the clinical daily practices or uh, kind of clinical uh, syndromes or, or disease that happen if we had premature fusion of the cranial sutures. Again, this is the sutures here. Major four suture, metopic, chronal, sigital, and lambdoidal suture. When one or more of the infant's cranial bones grow together, prematurely they close too early, that is when a premature semastosis of cranial bone suture occurs normally, uh, which hit to the uh, development of the brain and since your organ is inhibited. So what happened, think about the soft tissue growing, but the suture is not responding. Because of these suture are fused. We call it synostosis. So you've got another thing too. We've got synchondrosis, we've got synostosis. What's different? Synostosis is the early fusion of the suture. Synchondrosis is different, it's like cartilage between two bones. Various characteristics, anomalies of the head develop as a result, and in extreme cases, the development of the brain and sensory organ is uh, hindered, so we need surgical uh, intervention to help growth, the brain to grow. The, the management, like, the, it's a broad, broad subspecialty. We have a clinic here in the third floor, craniofacial anomalies, and it's multidisciplinary team. It has plastic surgeon, neurosurgeon, and the, uh, from dental uh, point of view, we have orthodontist and pedodontist helping in terms of like, uh, planning different things because this type of, uh, usually it comes as a syndrome like Eppert syndrome or Crozer syndrome. It's not some like single approach. It has to have like at least 12 or 13 uh, professional in the same uh, management team going from day one to the deliver end. So. So the, the surgery proved 
uh, to be necessary, it's usually performed between fourth and seven months after birth. The cranial bone is reshaped to enable further further growth of the head and normal development of the brain and sensor organs. The solution is simply to re to create the missing suture. Strip of uh, bone is removed from the skull where this suture normally would be located. Regrowth of the bone across the strip is prevented by folding the plastic strip over the edges so they don't go back and fuse again. This new artificial suture releases the skull enclosed area along the brain to expand normally. If the base of the skull as well have this problem, they do surgery on the cranial base uh, as well. The, the whole concept, the same concept, regardless where is the suture are fused, if that suture need to be opened to help growth of the brain, then we do that. Uh, uh, Surgeons do that. So here's the how would be the head shape? Well, I mean, uh, it's not always something that needs surgery when we have fused or partially fused. You think about some people you know, maybe they you see their head look a little bit different. Or I remember we had <laughs> one in my school. He was like we call used to say something about. But when you, when you <laughs> so so uh, it's it's like if it's cosmetic problem, then you will think about it as a cosmetic problem. But you don't know. I mean, you don't you wouldn't do surgery just to correct. Let's say a little bit broad forehead in here. But this is it's like uh, what would happen in sagittal if the sagittal one is not expanding. So the sagittal in the middle. So you think no horizontal expansion. It would be long head like this, football head. And here, <laughs> the metopic cenostosis is my friend. He had the, his forehead is like, you, you feel it a little bit pointy, so we know it's, uh, he, he's okay. I mean, he doesn't have any, I mean, any problem. He just happened to have this metopic uh, suture fused a little bit earlier than normal, so. And again, here is the lumpdoid, the unicronal, so. And this is bilateral form of cenostosis. So we could have any one of these or part of it in normal people. But this one is not normal. <coughs> this kid has a syndrome. And you see, because of the, the, cranial, the, the cranial suture is fused early, the only way the, the brain could go is forward, the forehead. So you see, the classic pattern of any upper syndrome, you'd see flat head from the back with bulging and expanded forehead like this. Um, and it's like, again, it's like you see their eyes because the brain is pushing from behind. They have this classic, I mean, uh, characteristics of their eyes, like bulging eyes. And sometimes they, I mean, they need to do urgent surgery to release the pressure inside the cranium and make everything uh, goes back to the normal. So this is what we have today about the cranial base, cranial ball, and uh, kind of what would happen if the suture has cenostosis. Uh, any question? If there's a successful intervention on a baby of this age and then they grow up to be an adult, would you be able to tell that they had Apert syndrome or would they resolve and seem completely normal? The, this is not the only, I would say it could, you could have it if it's not non-syndromic suture fusion, but Apert syndrome is a genetic disease and it has, this is the easy part of it. It has a lot of things, I mean, you they need to fix that, so you wouldn't, you would tell Apert syndrome even if they had surgery or had been treated all the way because they never like finished their treatment. But non-syndromic surgery for, I mean, non-syndromic sutural cenostosis, it depends how, I mean, much cenostosis has been there and how early they do the surgery to do that. All right, thank you. Yeah, we'll start this. Yeah, not that right.